<laughs> oh, wow. I feel like it's been forever. It's been quite some time. We've had a couple weeks off. Not really. Just not like this. <sighs> yeah. You know. Things happened. Well, we've talked about it already. Um, it's already muted, so we're good to go. Okay. But we're back today. Yeah. And we're talking about 50th anniversary merchandise. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's a good topic to discuss. Um, obviously, the craze has subsided a little bit when it comes to it as a whole. Really? Has it? I feel has like it, it. Well, people aren't getting slugged for a tumbler. Aren't they? No, um, now it's just for like a spirit jersey. No, I think. Well, I think the real the real tough part is it's now it's like a scavenger hunt. Oh. Like, where is the merch in the yeah. box? I feel like there's a lot to talk about when it comes to this. A lot more than maybe... That I just brought up? <laughs> we originally anticipated, but... Yeah. So, yeah, is Disney's 50th anniversary merch too expensive is the, like, original title of today's video. Yeah. Today's discussion. Um, the one branch that will... <laughs> we did sit you a little bit closer to us today. Yeah, we're trying out. It felt like you were so far away. Oh yeah, for sure. Like it just didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. So I know that you're kind of sitting a little bit low right now, but um, we're just testing some. We stuff. wanted to try this, yeah. see if it works for us. So yeah. um, here we are. Here we are. So 50th anniversary merchandise. Yeah. Where do we begin? At the beginning. So, I feel like, all right, so right off the bat, I feel like we should start off by saying, what? Why are you laughing at oh, me? It's just funny. I feel like we should start off by saying that this is a, this is one of those weird conversations mm -hmm. that I feel like there's no good way. There's no like real good way to talk about this topic because no, there's not. we're talking about money. Mm-hmm which is like a forbidden topic for some people. <laughs> and we're also talking about something that's like super subjective. And that is what exactly is expensive. Yeah. So that's a thing. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> even so, I feel like we can still kind of have the conversation and it still can kind of like make sense. Yeah, I think it's going to, you know... It's gonna... And we, yeah, we can still communicate. Sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, that's literally where it's going to... Where we're going to go with it. We're going to be able to get the point across and have the discussion and hopefully not make people mad. Not I don't make know. too many people mad. Um, the goal is not to obviously make anyone mad. Well, so. yeah, that's never the plan. Like, we never set out to, to be like, we're going to make people angry today. But I think that... The nature of what we do and the nature of how we talk about things sometimes just is is not going to make us friends all the time because mm -hmm. we bring up things in a different way than some other people might mm -hmm. and we communicate what we feel is honest and well it's our it's truthful. our well yeah it's you know and then it's our view and if you don't agree with it then of course you get you know infuriated by it or you just <laughs> infuriated the that's a you big know, one. <laughs> but that, I mean, that's literally what's happening. It's for some people, unfortunately. So yeah. hopefully um, that doesn't happen today. Yeah, we'll you see. Know, try so, to lay out the facts. As best as, we know them. As best we know them or as best we can. So um, right off the bat, though, what are your thoughts about 50th anniversary merchandise? Have you had a chance to really like dig into 50th anniversary merchandise? What do you think about it? I think 90% 90, 90 of it. It's just merch. It's, I'm not too, I'm not like, oh my God, I have to have all of it. There's a few select items. I do feel, so, um, well, this is the first 50th anniversary that we've seen at Walt Disney World. Yeah. But they chose to release merch in a very interesting way. Oh, gotta sneeze. Bless you. Um, so they chose to release <laughs> merch for the 50th anniversary kind of in waves. So yeah. it wasn't like a collection that just came out. Mm -hmm. They like kept introducing new pieces and they're continuing to introduce new pieces. And there's going to be new stuff based on what they originally said mm -hmm. all the way up until 
that 18 month mark because this is an 18 month celebration and there's probably going to be stuff beyond then too mm -hmm. but um so that's kind of like part of it right um uh, i feel like there is a little bit of something for everyone with 50th anniversary merch like there's stuff that is like well, I mean, it literally is everything. It's keychains all the way up to... Yeah, but I mean, like, as far as style is concerned, like, there's stuff for, like, collectors, and then there's stuff for, like, the casual Disney fan. Yeah. So I do think that they kind of did a good job with that. Um, but to your point, I don't, like, I don't feel super passionate about anything that came out for the 50th anniversary. No, I don't think there's even... I, I feel bad, I guess, saying this, and this is where we might make some people mad. I don't have to have any of it. Like, I'm not like, I need this. Yeah. Item I mean, to it, mark, you know, especially we, to mark uh, the 50th. Yeah. And we even, you know? like, we were thinking about it mm -hmm. um, because we were like, Donna says nice shirt. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's a nice one. Disney Very Vacation comfy. Club shirt. It is yeah, a really It's comfy a DVC shirt, shirt uh, and it's nice and soft. It got some bold claims though. It says "Finding Paradise Wherever I Go." It's quite the bold claim. Well, that doesn't necessarily. I've mean. gone places. Very hard to find paradise in Nebraska. Just saying. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> That's fact. Good. That's um, good. Maybe an uncomfortable fact, but a fact nonetheless. Fact. Um, if you're mad, it's true. <laughs> I feel like there. Even, I was going during the 50th anniversary celebration, mm -hmm. and I was like, what is it that we want? Is there anything we want? Yeah. And I did not find anything that I was particularly, like, when we looked ahead of time, I didn't find anything that I was particularly passionate about right off, right from the beginning. I did end up getting some things, like I have a Mickey, the Mickey popcorn bucket and the mini sipper, which I think are really cute. They're a 50th anniversary thing, and I feel like they were a good, affordable thing yeah but i didn't feel like okay so the most passionate about anything that i saw 50th anniversary okay that mm -hmm. i was like i could see myself buying that mm -hmm. before pricing yeah is concerned were the ray-ban sunglasses yeah you really like those huh because well it's because i like sunglasses sure but it's so, not because it was 50th merch it's because no. you like sunglasses and that was actually going to be my point i'm going to add this real fast mm -hmm. um the reason why we got the, like, the popcorn bucket, for example, and the sipper, specifically the popcorn bucket, is we collect popcorn buckets. Yeah. So why wouldn't we pick up the 50th popcorn bucket? Yeah, and, and the sipper was like, you know, it's pear, so it was perfect. But like, and it we're was. not like sipper people or whatever. No. But we do like popcorn buckets. Yeah, sorry. So, um, no, you're good. Um, but, so the, but that's what, what appealed to me about the Ray-Bans is that they were sunglasses. And for those of you who don't know, I am like... A crazy sunglass person. I have sunglasses on my head all the time. 24-7. <laughs> it's like constant. Um, and I'm not, like, it doesn't matter the price of them. I, I, like, I like sunglasses mm -hmm. that I like. Mm -hmm. um, and I like aviators. I saw these and I was like, oh, two birds, one stone. Like, something I like that's also 50th mm -hmm. anniversary merch. Yeah. Um, I didn't buy them, obviously. Right. You would see them. But I didn't buy them. Um, but that was the only thing that kind of, like, called to me. And it was like, oh, you could, I could see you buying this. Because it yeah. was something that I already like. Um, but there was, there was nothing else that really screamed to me, like, you should get this thing. From the 50th collection. <sighs> yeah, and it's tough. So, like... Um... You know, I, as uh, most of you know, and if you don't, uh, I, I love collecting pins. Um, shoot. The pins weren't great. It, the, the pins aren't the best. Like, we got one. Yeah. And, not, and we settled. Like, we got a, a pin. At, like, we got a pin, and, like, it was, like, a big time we settled. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, I, I have a couple watches. Um, I actually don't wear them near enough. I want to start wearing my watches more. Um, but, like, the one thing that stood out to me, just, like, you know, the glasses stood out to you, is, like, the Citizen watch. Yeah, that stood out to me, too. I really you know like what I mean? Citizen watch. It's, it's, it was beautiful, it's very well done, but it's, like, again, I don't need it. I think it's tough. 
Well, it's not that you don't need it. You know what I mean? Like it's it's just it's not like you don't need it like you couldn't use a wash or whatever but it's one of those things where you look at it and you're like yeah of all the things i'd settle for this sure you know what i mean like that's kind of how i feel about it we did get a comment you want to read that real quick yeah donna said uh, i would not get all of it just the popcorn bucket and a sipper i love my orange bird sipper and i want more (laughs) (laughs) maybe a pin yeah you know exactly you know um the orange bird sipper is of great quality you know it was a nice a uh, piece of merchandise, and it was um, affordable. It was affordable. Um, you know, it was it was aesthetically pleasing to like put on a shelf, mm-hmm. almost like a like a statue, really, or like yeah. a figurine. Um, and it didn't like show as a sipper. You know, where like normal. Yeah, I mean, we don't have the straw sticking out of it either. You yeah, know, but... you know what I mean. Yeah. But like, same thing with like the popcorn bucket. You know, it has a strap for your neck, but you can take the strap off, and then the zipper for mini, you can take that off, and you have two nice figures. Yeah. That look really nice, and you can have them around your house, and you can enjoy them, at all times if you so choose to. Mhm. Um, but yeah, some of it's just. Yeah. So so, so that being said, yeah. there's not a lot that stood out to us. But um, setting that aside, like the stuff that stood out or not, mm-hmm. we're talking about things being expensive. Yeah. Are they too expensive or not? So we wanted to talk a little bit more about that, kind of dig mm-hmm. into that in particular. So um, the whole topic of things being expensive at Walt Disney World is not new. No, not, um, especially not recently. Forever. People have been talking about how expensive Walt Disney World can be. And one thing that I always ask, and you're going to hear me asking it a lot recent, a lot coming up, because we've got a lot of topics about stuff like this, is compared to what? Mm -hmm. Um, When it comes to stuff being expensive, I think one of the things that we really have to ask ourselves is, like, it's expensive, but compared to what? Mm -hmm. You know? Um... You have to compare it, unfortunately. Yeah, I I think so, especially right now, because there are a lot of people... I mean, if you're here, you're watching this, you probably have seen other people on YouTube or in blogs or on Instagram or TikTok who point out stuff and they're like, wow, this is super duper expensive. This is what happens when you try to buy stuff from Disney or whatever. And then you look and you're like, well, okay, it's a $25 or $30 t-shirt and that seems super expensive, but compared... Mm -hmm. To compared what? to what? Um, because, you, you know, t-shirts? if you go somewhere else, you might realize that the, the t-shirt, a $25 t-shirt really is about on par, or $30 t-shirt is about on par with what you would pay for a t-shirt elsewhere. Maybe not at Walmart on the clearance rack. Yeah, and I think... But yeah. if we're talking about going to other places, buying another D- Disney t-shirt from, you know, a place like Target... You know, sometimes those are 20 bucks. Sometimes they're less, but, you know. Well, and I think the thing is, is um, especially, like, you know, when it comes to comparison, is what are you actually getting? You know, we can get really nitty-gritty into the details of what's the shirt made out of. Yeah. Is it, you know, you know, is there a blend to it? Is it comfortable? You know, you and can tell sometimes, it. for sure, I will say, like, when you get Disney stuff or any other stuff, but especially mm-hmm. Disney stuff, like, there are times when you're looking at it on the rack and you're like, this is not worth that. No. It's super thin. The, you know, it's printed on in such a way that you know it's not going to last. Yep. So, I mean, and that could be said for anything. Some, you know what I mean? Like yeah. some shirts are way more worth it than others. It really just depends what you're looking at. Yeah. Uh, I think this is actually a really perfect example is like, this is, this is a Disney shirt. Um, it's a DVC shirt in particular. It's amazing quality. Yeah, it's a really nice shirt. You know what I mean? It's really good quality. I don't mind paying the money for uh, an expensive shirt if it's comfortable and it's what mm-hmm. I want. Now, the second part of uh, my uh, my point here was uh, obviously like the material that these items are made out of, and that goes across the board: clothing, you know, sippers, popcorn buckets, you know, the, and then the other part though is the details. Mm-hmm. So um, if you notice, some stores aren't allowed to have certain titles of Disney. Mm -hmm. They are abbreviated or they're just completely different from what you would even be able to get in the parks. It's licensing. Yeah, it's it's all licensing, right? Um, So, you know, do you want... uh, I could go into crazy detail. We're not going to go there. But just to give you an idea is 
details matter mm-hmm. and details cost money. Mm-hmm. So we have to do a proper comparison or at least come relatively close. Like you said, you can't go yeah. off of the clearance rack at Walmart for a solid white t-shirt and then compare that to, you know, yeah. Of course this. you can get a $5 t-shirt somewhere. Shoot. But you can even get $5 t-shirts at the Disney outlet stores. Yeah. Sometimes. You know what I mean? So again, what are you buying yeah. and where are you buying it from? So, um, so let's talk about some of the things like, since we are talking about like all this, like what are some of the things that stand out as super expensive and kind of ridiculous? Cause there is 50th merch that's super expensive. And in my opinion, kind of ridiculous. So we're going to start our way at the top and work our way all the way down. Go for it. Um, I think one of the things that's super expensive, mm-hmm. actually there's only one, well two, I guess technically things that I would call super expensive and ridiculous. And that is, the it's like the jeweled lux mickey ear hat as well wow. as the ear headband so the mickey ear hat that i'm talking about i don't have a picture of it to bring up for you but we did show it in one of the last videos in the last um like vlog at disney that i did mm-hmm. um it is one thousand dollars yep and it's, I'm sure you've probably seen it. It's a, it looks like a regular Mickey hat, you know, like the classic one with the ears and its actual cap. <laughs> um, sorry, my eyes are so itchy. It's like, oh, anyway. Um, and it is covered in, like they call it jewels or gems, but it's like plastic, so on, mm-hmm. yellow, like gems. Yeah. Um, and the, the hat itself is made, like, it's covered in sequins, and it's got these gems. I saw this in person, and, okay, and uh, really, before I do that, the, the ear headband is very similar. It's $750. Mm-hmm. Um, the difference is it's obviously an ear headband, and it has a black bow. Kind of looks like velvety, but it, mm-hmm. it's not velvet. Um <clears throat> This is, to me, this stands out as the most expensive and ridiculous thing when it comes to 50th anniversary merch. <coughs> Excuse me. But it's not exclusively because it's so expensive. so expensive. Yeah. It's because you can see very clearly the complete lack of quality. Yeah. And, uh, like, let's, let's get right into that. Details. Details matter. Yeah. Now, if that was made out of what definitely would look like more appropriate and I'll just worthy say, of the cost. I'll say right off the bat. Sure. Um, so I have a background in theater. Mm-hmm. I've worked with rhinestones. Lots of rhinestones. Um, they're not that expensive. Um, no if, plastic jewels. Yeah, but they're not plastic either. Like, like rhinestones actually look nice sure. versus this plastic garbage. If they would have used rhinestones, I would be like, yes, a thousand dollars, perfect price point for this. Even if it was like rhinestones on top of sequins, you still would have had me going like, yeah, okay, perfect, thousand bucks. In my opinion, not worth it to me, but I can see how it's worth it. Mm. This looked like something that you could have pulled together at a Walmart for twenty five dollars. Yeah. I, I would agree wholeheartedly with that. I think it's 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 pretty rough to, to see that kind of quality and mm. that price tag. Yeah. So for me, that's an example. Those two items, the $1,000 mm-hmm. ear hat and the $750 headband were like the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Now, they also had a $250 headband. Now, right. to me, this Lux $250 headband... Although not worth it to me, I'm not into ear headbands that much. Right. Um, I would say that this is a more realistic price point for that. Yeah, because that was, was like, like leather, right? I think it was full leather, but yeah. still, it was like, it, it looked, looked like good. leather. Yeah. And the ears themselves are um, were like embossed mm-hmm. with the 50th anniversary. Like it was clearly 50th anniversary. Yeah. Um, so. Still overpriced, in my opinion, but much more balanced mm-hmm. because, yeah. you know. And the, none of them were brought to you by anyone. It wasn't like Vera Wang. Like, you know how they have the Vera Wang ones or like the What's designer the, I think the ones? ones were. 
I thought the deluxe ones were designed by a particular person. Well, I don't think so. I could have sworn Because I was, was just looking at it today, and it did you not say, like... Yeah. Like, this is a designer. No, it's just, just like... Fancy. Um, Russ is going to check for us. Uh, I could have sworn Because I, could, I would be happy to stand corrected here. Um, but I also appreciate that, like, overpriced as it might be, there are... You know, some things are designer or by designers, and they're limited quantity and everything like that. Um, but this this does not seem to be that. I must be thinking of something else entirely. You might be thinking, yeah, it just says WDW 50th anniversary Lux mm. logo Jewel. jeweled headband. Yeah. That's it. And that's um, it. Yeah. I, I must be thinking of a different set of ears. Uh, I apologize. Not that I didn't... I also would I like just... to correct myself. I don't think that that has the velvet bow. I think it's a leathery bow. I don't know why I was thinking of a velvet bow. I must be thinking of something else. Okay, no, 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 no. no, no the ones right. with the gems have the velvet bow. Yeah, the 750. Bow. The other the, ones. The two, yeah, the two. Two something have three. a leathery yeah. bow. Okay. So anyway, so um, that's the situation with that. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, to each their own. I want to be very clear. To each their own with anyone who buys any of this. Well, I'll tell you right now. But I, I, I have no problem. I, I'd have no problem buying some of the stuff. If I felt like I wanted it, um, you know what I mean? Like any, any merch, you know what I mean? Um, let's see here. Donna um, says, yeah, let's get I don't here. care if those, those ears or headband was designer. There's no way I would buy them at that cost. I especially, I think the thing for me that really hits home is I certainly wouldn't buy them at that cost for the way that they looked. There's no yeah. like, I mean, I wouldn't buy a pair. I'm not that into it. Like, I have to be very clear about that. I don't collect ear headbands like some people do. I don't coll collect ear hats like some people do. Um, I have some that mm -hmm. are, like, I like because I like them. But I'm not, like, a collector. If I was a collector, I would not buy these because the quality is just garbage. Well, so, and that's the thing. Let's, let's actually talk about that for a mm -hmm. second, right? Um, you know, there are collectors out there. Who mm -hmm. are literally going to buy these, put them, keep them in the box, and just put them away, or they're going to get framed and they're going to get put on a wall, or let's be honest, they're not going to be worn. No, they're not going to be as some would consider enjoyed. Some people, I'm sure, will. I've seen some people well, out and about wearing them. So here's the thing, right? So if just by the look, the quality doesn't look that impressive, if you're someone who does wear your ears in the parks. How long do you think those are going to hold up for? Well, I think the hard part is, is I don't think that with these in particular, I don't think that you can really win. So I think if you make them of rhinestones, it's going to be heavy and people aren't going to wear it. Like people aren't going to want it. Yeah. But I also think that since you made it out of plastic and it's a thousand dollars, people aren't going to wear it. Right. Because it's a thousand dollars, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, so I think it's it's a delicate balance, and I want to really appreciate that. I don't so mind. I also don't even mind the use of the plastic gemstones. Like, if it was like they had some rhinestones, some plastic to make Those it quality. Like, yeah, I was you know, say, or you know, even a nicer quality plastic. I don't know if that's a thing. I don't, I don't know, know, but these just anyway, look garbage. They didn't look. They anyway, did not look special. Um, moving on from that, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that seems very expensive. And by the way, if you have anything that, in your opinion, you think is way too expensive, we would love to hear about it. So leave it in the comments and we will talk about it. Yeah. Um, I think um, one in particular, um, if I'm not mistaken, the train set. So the train set um, is $500. And when I, th and, and like you said, uh, like expensive, like, we're over $100 for one item. Yeah. Technically, you know, it's a train set, but it's one item you are buying, and it's over $100. Yeah. I feel like that is expensive. So this is an item that a lot of people have been pointing to as well. When it was mm -hmm. released, a lot of people were like, wow, $500 for a train set. Um, and I can't disagree. Mm -hmm. I think so, too. Yep. Or at least I did. Yeah, you, um, you brought up some very interesting points. So... Um, in preparation for today, I decided I was going to start working on a post over on our website. And um, in doing that, I went ahead and I pulled out all the things that I thought were super expensive um, and were like, sure, fire, like, there's no way it's worth it mm -hmm. items. Yep. Um, and I also pulled up some other items that I think 
are probably talked about like they're too much, but I don't necessarily agree with that. So we'll get to those two today. Mm -hmm. But the train set was one that I was like, oh, this is going to be the most expensive toy I've ever seen. It's kind of ridiculous. Mm. Um, and I had already been like singing the praise of the $150 castle. Yeah. Because the castle, they also sold a castle, uh, like a castle place at 150 bucks. And as expensive as that is, I was like, this actually, I think it's worth it. Because it's pretty big, it's a whole playset, and comparis- comparing, it's got like sounds and stuff, Like, and when you compare all of oh, really? the things that you can see, mm-hmm. or all the things that you can get, 150 bucks for such a big playset, I think is fair. Um, so when I saw the train, I was like, yikes, 500 bucks. Mm-hmm. And then I looked, and it says on the, it's, um... Like, the name of it, it says, buy something. Buy mm-hmm. a name brand. And so I was like, I'm going to go look it up. I think it's like Lion Crest or something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head. Sure. But anyway, I was going to go. I'm going to go look that up. I looked it up, and it turns out this isn't just any toy train set. Right. This is an actual, like, model train starter kit. Yeah. And that happens to be Walt Disney World 50th anniversary themed. Yeah. So. This is quality. Yes. Without even looking at it, you're, the name alone, anyone who's into trains, it already turns on a light bulb going, oh. Yeah. This isn't okay. like some random plastic train set that you buy no. to go under your Christmas tree, although they do sell under Christmas tree train sets at this company. Um but this is, like, the type of thing that you have in your basement with a whole town. Mm-hmm. Um, although this is a little set. It's a, it's a small version because you can buy more pieces. Right. But um, one, like, train car, when I was looking it up, is, like, $75 for mm-hmm. one train car. Yeah. Um, you know, that kind of thing. And when I looked as well, these starter kits, I think they're called, like, the ready-to-use starter kits that come with everything you need to have this electric train set work go for about four hundred dollars so right off the bat four hundred bucks for a generic train set yeah not a ip'd a licensed a license a licensed licensed walt disney world 50th anniversary train set yeah so not only is it walt disney world's 50th yeah. So. So I do still think it's fair to say that that's quite the markup. A hundred dollars on top mm-hmm. of the price that you could get something similar for. Yeah. Is still quite the markup. I think yeah. that's fair to say. And so going back uh, real quick to you talking about the castle, the castle toy is the exact same situation, is it not? I don't know who makes the castle. Oh, my apologies. I could have sworn the castle was also in the same ball ballpark I don't, realm. I don't know who makes um, the castle, so I can't talk about that. But yeah, so I, I think, you know, for as big as that castle is, and you get like little figures, and you said it, yeah. like, it had lights and sound, so, I, you know, I yeah. don't think that's that bad. No, uh, no, 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 I think, I think it's I think it's reasonable. Um, but here's the thing. I'm going to break the game. The one piece of merch that seems reasonable, I feel, is actually legitimately expensive. What? You're holding it in your hand. Okay. This isn't the... Not the. The official... What what does it say? Like, grab your children, grab your wife, we're going to the Emporium to get this thing, and there's going to be a brawl. This is not that zipper... No. Tumblr, but um, I will say one thing that is, in my opinion, ridiculously overpriced, and I agree 100%, mm-hmm. is the Starbucks tumblers. So, this is a Starbucks tumbler that I just got. It's actually like, it doesn't have the tag on it anymore. I think I paid $25 20. for this, 20, 20, 25. No, 20. For this, I think. I think it was 20. Ah, well, Whatever. 20, 25, under 30 bucks. Um, this same. Thing, just with a 50th anniversary who's he wants he right here and 
It's like iridescent blue. Yep. Um, they also have pink ones that they released as well. Okay. They are $50 at Walt Disney World. $50. And to that, I say, you have got to be... Well, so let's, let's, let's break it down real quick, right? So, like I said, we're talking about price. We're talking about quality, details. We're details. talking about quality. Now... I was. I'm not a. I'm not a Tumblr person. I'm um, honestly not a huge Tumblr person myself, but no. I do like having. I like having a bunch of different water bottles around so I can drink water because I never hydrate because I've got this problem. Well, so and then the you thing. have this, which I'm a huge fan of. But the problem with this thing is that you have to like suck for dear life to get the water through. It's this. got a built-in filter. It's got a built-in filter, and it's just like sometimes you have, you have to work. For this so sometimes you don't want to have to work for it boo and i will say i'm a huge fan of starbucks like tumblr i've always like they're good quality and that's the thing they're good they're good quality plastic they're they're they have good gasket on the, on yeah, the lid and stuff like that gaskets. you know what i mean it, overall it's a good product right so you're not getting some flimsy cheapo yeah. style tumbler you're getting a decent product for the 20 to 30 dollars that we spent on this i know we didn't spend 30 but we're going to round up to 30 yeah just call it a day that means that you're getting the exact same quality you're getting the same everything except mm -hmm. for a color difference and a logo difference you're spending an additional 20 dollars on top of on top of that yeah that's a significant markup. That's a sig so. This is an example of something that I call something I would consider a significant markup, and uh, yeah, there's no way around it. I think the thing is, is that there are people who are going to buy it regardless, mm -hmm. and so that they know they can mark that mark it up, and so they just go, "Hey, it's a significant markup." There it yeah. is. And I think that that's where your argument lies. You know, I think you have, I, th I think personally, if you have a problem with Disney merch being too expensive and ridiculous, point it at the Tumblr. Like, I yeah, this like is an example of one that I think, but here's... I think it's okay. a legitimate okay. argument going, this yeah. is way too expensive. Yup. Yeah, this is way too expensive You know what you're getting. I, you know, and I mean, I think it's cool. I do like the Disney one. I didn't see any... I wanted, when I went... I wanted to see if I could get my hands on one. Not to buy it, but actually, like, see it mm -hmm. physically. Yeah. Because I had this, like, thought process in my mind. Like, when I go to Disney, I want to share some info with you guys. And I got there, like, right after the craziness of, like, the the droves of people who were, like, hip checking guests yeah. in order to get them. And so I was like, well, I wonder if, like, it's just a... Like, will I be able to get one? Mm -hmm. I could not find any when i went um now i know that there were more later like yeah, they put they, they more on the now. shelves later yeah. later um but i there well there's no more anymore they have a different one now of course they do. but which makes sense considering um, them. but but i i couldn't get my hands on the original ones mm -hmm. which you know what is what it is um but i think that there's this like it's a it's a perfect example of something being in the in just the right sweet spot though okay okay so from a from a different standpoint i think that the reason that these sold like hotcakes like they did is because i think there's a sweet spot that's like while it is expensive mm -hmm. it is not too expensive yeah. To be a problem. And just unique enough. Yeah. For the average person. So, for example, this is an item that people are going to use every day. This is where I kind of... I'm going to get off track here for a second, but hang in there with me, right? <laughs> we'll so, the I think that there are certain items that are going to get significant amount of use. Mm -hmm. And, therefore, you can charge more for them because the value of the item just in your daily life is going to be greater. So... This is actually something I talk about a lot when we talk about thinking about the souvenirs you buy when you go to Walt Disney World. Mm -hmm. Although it might make sense to you to buy certain things, it actually makes more sense to spend a little bit more on an item you know you're going to get a lot of use out of. Mm -hmm. So maybe, you know, there's a, I don't know, a $12 pin and you're like, well, 
I'm not a huge pin collector, but this pin set, or like a $30 pin set, right? So okay. like this $30 pin set is really cute. It's 50th anniversary. I'm not a huge pin collector, but this is a 50th anniversary pin set, right? It might seem like that's a better option because it's $30, but mm -hmm. if you're a sunglass person like I am, and you're like, well, I'd rather spend $260 on this pair of sunglasses because I'll use them every day. Right. So all of a sudden, you're either going to take $30 <clears throat> and throw it in a drawer or take $260 and wear it every day, <coughs> therefore making your like making the value of that item much more valuable. Am I making sense here? And that's the thing. And that's what I think, sorry, no, about not. the tumbler. I think that it's 50 bucks and that's way too much money for a tumbler in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But I can see how people would be like, but I'm going to use it every day. Well, and I think that's the thing is everyone's different here. That again, it's subjective. Yeah. Um, not only is it subjective, you add another layer to it of, you know, can I use it? Yeah. You know, can I get my money's worth out of it? Now, there are people who would just put that thing on a shelf with the rest of them and stare at them and say they got the exact same amount of use as you, for example, who drinks out of it every mm -hmm. day. To each of their own. Yeah. Um, but I think that when it comes to Disney pricing things and when yeah. people go like, why would you price it at that? I think that's how, that's why they would price it at that. It's because they know they can well, make a good profit off of it. Yeah. But at the same time, it's in this like sweet spot where people are like, oh, like the Citizen Watch is another great example. Mm -hmm. There are people who are watch people. And they wear watches and they like certain types of watches. Now, I think the watch is like in the $300 price range. Yeah. Which... If you're a watch person, is very affordable. Like, it, yeah, three hundred dollars is like, you might as well say it's like a twenty-five dollar watch mm -hmm. to the average person, right? Yeah. But if you're gonna wear that watch every single day and it's gonna be like, well, it's a Disney watch, but I wear it every day, it's, it's worth, worth it. it. You know what I mean? Exactly. So it really depends on you and your your thing. And maybe that's the only piece of merchandise you buy. You just buy that one watch. So instead of spending three hundred dollars on a bunch of different crap. You buy three hundred dollars in one item and you use it all the time. Mm -hmm. It's really up to who you are. So I think that that's where that kind of comes from. Yeah, is like I know that fifty dollars is going to be fine for this. And that's the thing. It, it, Even though it's not fine for me. Well, so here's the thing. But I can see how people are like, eh, it's fifty bucks. I didn't buy my anything, myself anything this trip. Sure. You know. Someone like me, however. There's no possible way I would buy that for fifty dollars, especially considering I could save money and buy a Yeti version. That is actually insulated. This is not the same. Exactly. As a Yeti. But it doesn't even look like a Yeti. Although I love my Yeti, I have a Yeti. Here's the thing. I love my Yeti, but like this does not look like a Yeti. But here's the thing: function over fashion to some people, right? Function over fashion. I want my cold, my drink to stay cold in ninety degree heat. I want it to, you know, be drop proof. That thing. This is not drop proof. Exactly. So, but like, not only would I be able to get insulated and drop proof, for example, granted it won't look as nice as an iridescent no, it won't. tumbler, I'd still save money and get all the, the all the function out of it yeah. that I want. I really so think it's it so yeah. crazy. This argument. But this is like talk. apples. To, this is apples to oranges. Exactly. This is apples to oranges because they don't sell a Yeti. Yeah, so where are you at? So we're, we're yeah, where are you where at? You at, Disney? They but don't he, sell a Yeti, though. And that's the thing, though. That's what makes this argument so, I guess, I want to say tough to have. And conversation even tough to have. Because there is so, sorry, everyone. There are so <laughs> many different layers to this. And you can yeah. go off into these different, I guess, tangents mm -hmm. or whatever you want to call them. But at the end of the day, when you compare an item to an item, especially something like a tumbler that is exactly the same, the only difference is the color and a sticker, not necessarily well, a sticker, but a, sticker, a label. It's like a thing. Yeah, like an, uh, you know, a, a, a label, if a you stamp. will. The stamp. You lose me when I have to spend an extra 20 bucks on it. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I agree. I'm just saying that I think that that's where people come from with this stuff. Oh, totally. Because, yeah. like, here's my thing, right? I'm a puzzle person. They came out with 50th anniversary puzzles. Yeah. Although he did finish the puzzle, you can't see because it's, it's gone, all gone. Now, but it, he all finished done. the puzzle that was here. I was about to start my next one, come to find out, fun fact, completely going off point. I don't have a big enough table for it. Yeah. Because so it's, it's a 2,000 piece puzzle. <laughs> it's massive. So I got to get yeah. a special mat or something. something. Yeah, I'll figure it out. Um. However, <laughs> but the items, like for example, like these puzzles, 
they're not made by like Ravensburger and these higher end puzzle companies they made on the lower end, but they're very expensive. Yeah. So when you're talking the quality of a puzzle piece, I know this is a I little... I mean, I don't know what the... You're getting a little into the weeds here. But puzzles. that's what I'm saying. But no, 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 no. But that's what I'm saying, though. Like, the quality of a puzzle piece, for example, matters to someone yeah. like me who does puzzles. And, mm -hmm. like, when I open the box, I don't want to deal with bent puzzle pieces or, like, ill-fitted pieces. Like, when I put, finish my puzzle, I want it to fit well. Mm -hmm. And that costs money to get a good cut yeah. to make sure it looks nice. I'm making fun of me. I can hear it in your brain. <laughs> you can hear it in my brain? You can hear it in your brain. Um, but yeah, so I think that that's something to kind of keep in mind. Now, of course, there are other things that are expensive. Just off the top of my head, um, like I said, we talked about the Citizen Watch. The Citizen Watch is an expensive piece. It's pricey. But when you look at comparison of similar Citizen Watches, it's not that bad. Let's talk about the one you definitely know for a fact. The sunglasses. The sunglasses. Let's talk about that for a second. So... Ray-Bans, like I said, I like sunglasses. Yeah. I'm an equal opportunity sunglass wearer, so it doesn't matter the price of the sunglasses. I like $1 I like. to a thousand. Uh, yeah. I, well, matter. I don't have a thousand dollar pair of sunglasses, no. but I got some a couple hundred dollar pair of sunglasses. <laughs> um, the Ray-Bans is a tough one because, <clears throat> for, first of all, I'm not crazy about them. These, the particular Ray-Bans that we're talking yeah. about, not crazy about them. Um, because they're gold and I'm a silver mm -hmm. person. Um, but they're 260 something dollars. Yep. Which is expensive, even compared to some Ray Bans. Well, no, here's the thing. But not necessarily expensive compared to other Ray Bans that come in around 200 to 230 dollars. And now, this is a fun fact, right? So these were released right around the same time that Ray Ban came out with their Bluetooth speakered sunglasses and actually the ones with the camera sorry yeah this is they the came out with the ones with the camera on it i got very interested very quick and they were cheaper than they the were 50th. cheaper than the 50th but they were also <laughs> again we were talking apples to oranges but again but it's still worth noting it's still worth noting um if all the sunglasses do is block out the sun yet this one has a lot more other features well but here's literally. to be absolutely perfectly clear i'm not entirely sure that well i know that they, all they do is block out the sun but i don't know all the features of the sunglasses like, no. i don't know the types of lenses well, all these so, particular and, sunglasses i didn't go into correct. it that deep i mean look at the difference right here in my glasses alone you yeah. know these are glass lenses you can't versus even my, see mine at all uh, uh, versus <laughs> like my plastic ones yeah. so obviously quality matters here so we won't go too into yeah. the weeds but it's crazy though like a pair of sunglasses with a camera on it are cheaper than a pair of sunglasses without a yeah. camera on it. Um, and I, I also, you know, like I said, it depends on the Ray-Bans that you get because mm -hmm. they're not all 260 bucks. Yeah. I still think it's a little expensive, but there's that. Um, the other thing that, that everyone points to, because there's like a playbook here of sure. like the stuff that everyone points to. Mm -hmm. I don't ever see anyone talking about the Ray-Bans, probably because no one ever goes into the store where they sell the Ray-Bans. But... Um, <laughs> We do. Yeah, I know I do. But I always go and check them but out. But if you if you watch the like the videos or read what people are saying, no, no one's one... talked about the right bands, probably because no. no one cares about them. And it's and it's not Something it's not part really... of the playbook. Yeah. Meaning there are a lot of things I know we're pulling back the curtain here, but there are a lot of things that people will talk about because it's going to get views, it's going to get clicks, and it's going to be something that yeah. people are already talking and complaining about. Mm -hmm. So one of the things um, is the whole Lux collection as a whole. Yeah. So there's a there's like a corduroy Lux spirit jersey. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's it's not real corduroy, but it like it looks similar to corduroy. Mm -hmm. And there's like the pants the that go nurse. with it. Yeah. And there's like the lounge fly three hundred dollar backpack. And that's all part of the Lux collection. Mm -hmm. All of it, in my opinion, is a bit overpriced. Um, it's unique. It's it is very unique. <sighs> but black and gold does it sound unique versus like iridescent tumblers and yeah stuff? but it's really like i think the thing is when it lux, comes right? to lux it's yeah. lux that's the whole yeah, thing luxury. is the idea is that it is extra gold. and yeah. so you know. you're paying extra right. so i don't feel very comfortable being like see 50th anniversary merch is way overpriced mm -hmm. when i say things like that because i'm like well this is literally like you know i i was, I was thinking about it like this earlier i think i mentioned this to you but like because there is a thousand dollar pair of Mickey ears, mm -hmm. 
that doesn't mean that we can look at the entire 50th anniversary collection and be like, see, none of it's affordable. Just like because a Bentley starts at $250,000 doesn't mean we have to look at all cars and be like, none of them are affordable. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And this is kind of like the, you know, maybe it's not the Bentley of, mm -hmm. of uh, you know, spirit jerseys, but it's certainly not... The yeah. standard spirit jersey. Well, let's uh, let's switch gears here for a second and uh, talk about stuff that is within price. So the pin, not not too not not any more expensive than a regular pin. Quite frankly, everything that they are selling that's 50th anniversary mm -hmm. is right in line with everything that they're selling. Chippendale stuffies that have yeah. their iridescent jackets on, same price as. Is, dinosaur Chippendale yeah stuff. so like they have like a little set that's Chippendale yeah. 30 bucks if it's in the dinosaur outfit 30 bucks if it's in the 50th anniversary outfit all the pins are around the same price they're all comparable to other pins mm -hmm. so they're those $12 price point $10 price point depending on the type of pin you're getting mm -hmm. um, we could have a discussion about the price of all of these things by the way and how much they cost we'll get a little bit into it here in a second but comparing 50th anniversary merchandise not really a huge jump. The 14 inch in the 14 inch Mickey and Minnie plush in their 50th anniversary outfits. Mm -hmm. Same price as 14 inch plushes, which I think is like $30, $29, $30. But that's awesome though. That's how it really that in certain aspects, I think that's how it should be. Mm -hmm. um, the same can be said as well for most of the spirit jerseys. Mm -hmm. Um there are exceptions to this. So for example, the right. Vault Collection Spirit Jersey with the um the map yeah which is a, a in depth all around that one sells for 84 mm -hmm. as opposed to like 70. 74. um and then there's the ones that are selling for 100 bucks 109 i think is the price point and those are the ones that have the sequins all over them yeah. clearly there's more detail and more literally material added to yeah. it to create the design Kind of makes sense. Like at least there's a mm -hmm. there's a reason for the price hike. Yeah. Um, and some of them look amazing. Yeah. You know. Um, it's true. And I think like uh, you you already made a comment about the vault collection. Um, the vault collection is part of the whole fiftieth release, so mm -hmm. we're we're kind of including that in the fiftieth anniversary. It's not iridescent, <laughs> but it's vault collection as yeah. part of the whole fiftieth. Um, there are some items in there that are. Priced exactly as you would expect them to be, I feel like. Um, yeah, so like, and, and I think the thing that's really important too is that people aren't necessarily taking the time to look at everything. No. They take the time, and when I go back, I will take some more time to look at more things, and maybe we can continue this discussion then. Um, but they take the time to point out certain items, certain really popular items. And I think this is a big problem when we talk about merchandise. So, you know, you see things and you're like, ah, oh, that spirit jersey and it costs as much. Or, ah, oh, that button-down shirt and it costs $125. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, it's really expensive. But, like, um, they have, it's not an ashtray. They call it, like, a trinket dish. But they have, like, an ashtray. Yeah. Um, yeah. The toothpick holder. Same yeah, concept. so they have those things, like an ashtray, essentially, which I should have got, but I didn't see it because I, I collect ashtrays. Does she smoke? No. Nope. I'm not a smoker, but I collect ashtrays. <laughs> but you collect them. Um, so. You actually have a very, she has a very cool Spaceship Earth one. That's not a, that's not an ashtray. Looks like one. That's it right. It could be it's an not, ashtray. We, no, it's no, not. we thought it was. When we saw it, it was laying down and we thought was it was. like, it's an ashtray. But, but it's, it's not. not. Um, <laughs> Sorry. But I have some really cool ashtrays. <laughs> um, but. So I have to get this, but like that ashtray is a reasonable yeah. price. I think it's like 15, 20 bucks or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. They have back scratchers, like Mickey and Minnie back scratchers for $11 a piece. So there's there's stuff that isn't expensive, but the I think the game. thing is the board game is another thing they have as part of the vault collection. Some of that's good. I would that consider is, the board game cheap considering some of the board games out there nowadays. Yeah. So the board game I think is 39 something. Yeah. So it's like 40 bucks for the board game. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of things. Oh, I even saw this thermos, which I wanted to get, but I didn't. Um, like, it's like an old school thermos, like our kind of thermos, you know, like when you had it in the plastic lunch lunchbox yeah. and you like undo the top okay. and Soup. if you want to like, what do they call it? Like unlock a memory, like the, the action of undoing that, that like cup on the top, sure. like the sound of it and just like the muscle memory of doing it. Like I immediately was like transported back to the being a kid. A yeah. Long ago. But like. 
that is like 12 bucks, you know? Um, so there are more affordable things. Like not everything is super duper pricey. There yeah. are a lot of things that are more affordable. Um, was what it. glass? I think she's talking about the, the thermos. No, the thermos. Oh, the thermos. Uh, the thermos wasn't glass. It was a plastic one, like like in the kids' lunch box. Yeah, old school. Yeah. Um, how's it going, Mark? No worries on the punctuality. Don't yeah, you, it's all good. Don't you worry about a thing. <laughs> Um, we still got a long way to go, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, we do. We you know, we're just scratching the surface here. Um, but yeah, so there are a lot of things that are very affordable that are part of the collection. Um, and I have to be honest with you, I'm going to say something that I know is going to kind of be a little bit, a little bit crazy. Mm -hmm. But I've got a theory about why some people think that 50th anniversary merch is so crazy overpriced. Like crazy, crazy overpriced. And that would be scalpers. Okay. Go for it. So, when you go online and you're looking up stuff, like let's say, because I did this one today, um, the Vault Collection Spirit Jersey that has the Magic Kingdom map on it. Mm -hmm. When you type that in, the first thing that comes up is a bunch of shopping. You mm -hmm. know, like when you're in Google, and, and shopping comes up. And there are so many scalpers out there who have purchased these items and put them up for crazy prices that it almost looks like, like you almost wouldn't be able to imagine that it's such a price hike, especially yeah. like it's just immediately you don't associate it with the actual price. So I thought, and I've, I'll be the first person to tell you that I did this myself. I thought that that spirit jersey was in the $100 price range, like a like $100 yeah. plus. Sure. Because... I don't know. I could have sworn I saw somewhere that it was over $100 for that spirit jersey. But we, and when I... what? Not only did you probably see it in one place, you saw it multiple times, yes. roughly at the same price. And that's what I'm because saying. Because there's so many different places that... And scalpers are sending that, are selling that spirit jersey for $160 plus. That spirit jersey is $84. Not nice. When you buy it from Walt Disney World. That's not nice. And the same can be said for everything. The tumbler that we were just talking about just a few minutes ago that was selling at Disney for $50, you can find it online via scalpers for $150. Oh my that God, seriously? That is, yes. I did not, okay, so obviously I didn't <laughs> Google, I didn't yeah. Google that one. I was like, I was like, she's going to say like 80. No. Maybe 90. No. Are you kidding no, me? No, it's actually out of control. I am so sorry for any of you that may have actually purchased one of these items purely based on the fact that it's like you're not going to be able to go so you feel like you have to have it. I'm sorry, that's what you're having to resort to. I just need to put that out there. It's terrible. Because I understand like your want for an item. You know, I definitely can agree with that. Mm -hmm. But that's rough. Yeah. That's so well, and rough. And another perfect example, I know it's not really 50th anniversary merch related, but a perfect example was the figment popcorn bucket, which we'll get a little bit into here in a second. But that, fifth, that figment popcorn bucket was $25. And it was selling for $250 online. So now some people had it for more, some people had it for less, but there was figment popcorn buckets that went for hundreds of dollars and how are people okay with that well a lot of people aren't okay with that but anyway that's a conversation that's for a later or another day um so i think that when you're not at the parks when you're not looking at things yourself yeah. it's really easy to associate the prices that scalpers are putting online mm -hmm. with the price of actual merchandise and when you when you see that it's really easy to be like, oh, well, of course it's overpriced because, you know what I mean, like, the spirit jersey is, like, over 100 bucks, mm -hmm. But it's not over $100. Well, it's just that you can't find it online anywhere other than... Yeah. Now, <laughs> here's an interesting uh, fact, right? So let's... We're going to... I'm going to I'm gonna change it just slightly. Just okay. slightly, right? So we're talking about, like, scalpers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. There were items that you were seeing mm -hmm. and showing me while you were there last time, that was priced at normal prices, yet when you went to shop Disney, it was like 75% off. Yeah, so that's another thing, too, that I think that people... Um, I've, I've said this as a piece of advice before, and I, I have to just keep hammering home. Like, I need to scream this to the Disney heavens. Yeah. If you are going to Walt Disney World, make sure you're checking Shop Disney when you shop. 
Check Shop Disney before you even go. Yeah, I, I think you should look. check Shop Disney. And here's here's why. Because when I was there, there were a lot of items that I saw. Yeah. Um, some of which were on sale for crazy markdowns online. And this wasn't a like perfect the, example. twice upon a year sale. This was just... Well, what, no, it wasn't the Twice Upon a Year no, sale, but some of it was available on the Twice Upon a Year sale yes. as well. Perfect example is I have a shirt that has Claire Bocow on it. It's awesome. And it says, keep dancing. Mm -hmm. And that shirt, which I bought for, I think, $39, mm -hmm. that shirt was on sale for like 20 bucks mm -hmm. on Shop Disney. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that it was on sale at Shop Disney when I was there. That was a different thing. But I, I see people it's like it's still on it's still on the shelves at mm -hmm. Walt Disney World. Um, the one that I saw specifically when I was at Disney World and I'm commenting on specifically is the um do you guys remember that like Alice Alice in Wonderland like kitchen, like home goods set? Yeah. There was this like it was like teacups and spatulas and everything. Mm -hmm. Um it was all over the place at World of Disney, and people were grabbing it up at full price, but it was 40% off that same day mm -hmm. on Shop Disney. Yep. And it's crazy because, I mean, that's I know that that's a unique one because that one had been, like, they've been trying to sell that for a while, so I understand that, like, you know, I'm not talking about 50th merch here, but... There are 50th anniversary items that did go on sale pretty heavily. Yeah. Um, another thing that was crazy is like I have like the artist collection stuff that I purchased. Mm -hmm. um, like you could get it at the theme parks. I saw it there. But I ended up purchasing it for like 40% off plus 10% off. Yep. Um, it's like there are sales available. Um, and then on top of not having to pay full price, you also don't have to figure out how to get it home. You can have it just shipped right to your right. house. So it's kind of a good option too. Um, but yeah, so there's a, there are a lot of ways to yeah. save a little bit of money. For sure. Um, so there's a back and forth about the thermos. Okay, let's go back. They, well, they went down, they went down memory lane. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Sorry, I kind of got on a roll, so we stopped talking for a second. No, it's totally fine. So, uh, you know, Donna's saying hi to Mark, and she she's referencing the glass thermos. Mm -hmm. Mark replied, he, yes, he does remember it. <laughs> and he used to break his every day on the first day of school. That's I, I guess that's almost like, you know, everyone has that, though. Like, yeah. the first day of school, what happened? Well, I lost my lunch pail. How? I broke my thermos. Yeah, you broke your thermos. Yeah. It's rough, man. I think we all had that one thing when starting school. I've broken know. thermoses before, but that's probably why I always had crappy no metal inside therm or uh, no glass inside no glass. thermoses. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then Mark was saying, uh, I wear a 4X shirt um, and Disney doesn't accommodate my needs. So uh, no Disney shirts uh, for him, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, unfortunately, some of the bigger sizes is tough. Mm. Um, they don't. They just unfortunately just don't make yeah, it no. uh, in that size, unfortunately. Very rarely. But you know where it do, does have some some uh, bigger size Disney shirts? Hot Topic. Hot Topic? Uniqlo? Uniqlo. Um, I know specifically Hot Topic has bigger sizes. Yeah. Because um, um, I was like, I was looking in there and I was like, wow. Yeah. The, the size range is wonderful. Mm -hmm. So check Hot Topic. I know. I know what you're thinking. Really? But yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Seriously. Hot topic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, but yeah, I don't know why, but I was just, in my brain, I wanted to go back to the popcorn buckets for a minute. Yeah, let's go back to the popcorn buckets. And I can't even remember why, other than the fact that I was just, ref I was referencing the popcorn bucket because it was normal pricing, mm -hmm. right? And like the sipper cup was uh, normal uh, pricing. Yeah, Donna, Donna agrees. Yeah, for sure. It it's really a great is. place to get all Disney stuff, it's really, quite frankly. Yeah, yeah, you can get lounge flies. You can get all kinds of cool You can stuff. get lounge flies. Um, Accessories. They have, like, know. Disney dresses. They have some amazing Disney clothes. We just saw, actually, we were just at a Hot Topic, and I didn't take a picture because it was, like, up high, and I wasn't able to get, like, a good picture of it. But they had this really cute Winnie the Pooh shirt that oh, was, yeah. like, a button-down collared shirt. Mm -hmm. It was so cute. Yep. It's yeah, so really cute. Is. Hot Topic is one of those places I know we're kind of getting a little off topic here, but Hot Topic is, I think, the most overlooked. Um, no, it's at, hold on. Mark, I'm sorry, my brain. Um, it's at your local mall. 
Hot Topic. It's at your local mall. They have a website mm-hmm. as well. Um, it's that store that all the like goth kids go to. It's mm-hmm. the most overlooked store, in my opinion, for Disney fans because you know it's been it around since yeah. the 80s or whatever it was when it came in but like it it's dark and gloomy and it's very like angsty but hiding through those iron gates which most of hot topics yeah, have, still have yeah. um, hiding through those iron gates are tons of disney officially licensed items and i'm talking about uh, you have to check the website um that i was gonna say and that's my thing i wouldn't waste your time going to the local store yeah, Go the local right store the can be a the little bit amazing. much, but the website is great. Um, they, they always have, have sales. They always have some amazing sales. You can earn points. Like they have like, um, you know, when you sell, when you buy, like like Old Navy or wherever else, mm-hmm. you buy a certain amount, you get enough like yeah. hot dollars, topic cash. hot topic cash, whatever it is. So mm-hmm. you can cash that in later. Um, but they have... Like, I was just looking at bathing suits, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm talking about Disney related. Like, they have like some really cool bathing suits. They have some, like I said, dress shop style dresses. They've got great t shirts. They have awesome accessories. So, things like, um, you know, earrings and headbands, a lot of stuff that. If you've ever gone to your Disney store and you're like, I wish they had stuff in adult sizes or in plus sizes, um, Hot Topic. Go check your local Hot Topic. Another place for Disney stuff um, is a place called Box Lunch. Mm -hmm. It's also located at your local mall. Um, If you liked going to your local Disney store at the mall, if you had one, go back to the mall, check out Hot Topic, check out Box Lunch. You probably have one, if not both of those. Mm -hmm. Um, That's your new place for Disney stuff. Like, they've got tons of stuff. Yeah, outside of, like, a Target. Yeah, Box Lunch has some 50th anniversary merch Mm -hmm. in and of itself. It's a bit more expensive than Hot Topic. And it's... It's um more unique. I, I feel like they're a little bit more unique though in some of their items. In some of their items, yes. For sure. You know, but, some of the shirts are definitely like But it is know. a bit more expensive than Hot Topic. And yeah. Hot Topic has, especially if you're into t-shirts and clothing items, accessories, box lunch, check it out. But mm-hmm. for um like lounge fly bags and stuff like that, box lunch is the way to go. But if you're into like clothing or t-shirts in particular, Hot Topic does I, I don't know if it's once a year or a few times a year. They do like $5 t-shirt sales and yeah. it's like, it's great. So make sure you're checking them out. Buy I should get one free. Yeah. They have the a time. lot of deals yeah. like that. I am very not sponsored <laughs> no. by hot topic or anything like that, but I am super duper pro check hot topic or hot topic.com before your next Disney trip. You can get some it's really quality do. stuff. It's a must. Yep. It's a must do before you go on your next Disney trip for yeah. sure. And I'm going to bring in a new one that I just learned about here recently, uh, thanks to a lovely Christmas present, um, is if you're into button-down shirts, um, if you've never heard of it, called Roosevelt Shirts. It's spelled R-S-V-L-T-S. Yeah. Um, Roosevelt's. They don't have a store. It's online. Sorry. Um, Sorry. <laughs> it's online. But they do actually have... Uh, larger sized um, shirts. Mm -hmm. They go up to what, 4X? They go up to 4X. um, And I actually have one. And it's absolutely phenomenal. And it's great for Disney weather. Mm -hmm. Um, Especially, it's nice breathable material. It's layerable too. It is layerable. um, And they're all all Disney themed. And if you don't want the Disney ones, they have a bunch of other stuff. They do all kinds of pop culture. Um, So if you're not into wanting to wear a Disney shirt to Disney and you want to wear something else, you totally can. Um, but very good quality. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they're, I think they're, re- they're a button down shirt. So obviously they're, you know, they're not like a t-shirt price, but I feel like for their cost, totally yeah, they're it. pretty reasonable. I think so. So, um, for um, sure. And we've gotten a little off topic, yeah, but I okay, think it all, so what, let's, it kind of, it kind of, it's all, it's all part of it, but yeah. So let's go back to, um, I was on popcorn buckets. You were on popcorn buckets. Okay, so one of the things that I definitely want to say as far as 50th anniversary merch is concerned and just the price of things is I think that um, there are a lot of – I think that there are – hold on. Mark says, I was looking through a few of those shirts. Paige and Samara was wearing them, and then the comment disappeared. Sorry. Um, 
Yeah, wearing those a lot, pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, they are yeah. really nice. Yeah, they, yeah, he he definitely um, wears them a lot. Um, I think I don't think he's sponsored, but he definitely does some giveaways. So you know, they're definitely uh, yeah. helping him out, <laughs> <laughs> which is awesome though because they are a good quality item, and I totally get why you know he's supporting them because they are good. They're yeah. a great shirt, and they look good. You know, and there's nothing. If better you look than good, someone, you feel good. There's definitely nothing better than someone that like, like you can tell that they are pushing a product that they like yeah and that they use which is really great and i, I love mine because i always have i always have a smile on when, yeah. I, when i have mine on because it's just you know what you're wearing and you feel good about it yeah that's just where it's at um, um yeah. so popcorn buckets are an example of uh, something you can get 50th anniversary wise that are very affordable i think they're 100 percent worth it but they're the same price but I will say this. Now, this is the thing, right? So, uh, obviously, we, we're we versed in the popcorn bucket world. We have some that are we very are. basic. We have some that are pretty intense. Mm -hmm. Now, so when we're talking about these prices uh, for 50th merch, I feel like the 50th Mickey popcorn bucket is actually cheaper than it should be based on its quality. I feel like mm. so... I can't disagree with you. But in the same breath, I guess it. Now that I think about it, because we also have the alien popcorn bucket from Tokyo, and yeah. it's almost the same plastic. But it's just I don't know. The quality's there. The quality's there. It's a good little thing. Um, and I think that if you're looking for a 50th anniversary thing to have and like display, the popcorn Great bucket thing. and the zipper are like perfect. They're great. They're in yeah. there. They're in their outfits. You know, Minnie's posing, cute. Mickey's posing, and they <laughs> they clue they were clearly made. To go together yeah um and, and you know what i mean like i don't think you can beat that it's a normally priced item but yet it's 50th so it has some mm -hmm. uniqueness to it how could you not want that yeah uh let's see what mark said here uh you won't believe this but when i searched disney and guys the largest shirt is 3x mm, where I, is that yeah oh is it, maybe he's talking about, about hot, hot topic? topic maybe i would i would check at um like I would check when it comes to sizing, like at the, at the store, mm. um, because I I don't know what their options are available, um, but I know their t-shirts also can run really really big. It depends on the yeah. depends. Oh, well, they got a sale going right now. Right. Um, but yeah. So anyway, do they have a plus guy section as well? well I know they have the the. the female side so yeah let's see if there is i don't know they, I, got, they got haunted mansion stuff yeah it's like dedicated now it's crazy yeah. so um anyway so while he's looking over there um but yeah um popcorn buckets are a lot of fun uh, let's think about some of the things that okay so what overall what i was trying to get at was there are um there are definitely things that are overpriced for sure. And I mm -hmm. think there are also things that fall kind of in line with, fall kind of in line with what you would find normally. So sure. it depends. Um, there's also actually Mark brought up that he saw this like rise, which actually is a good segue, like this rise in cost of certain things in the past couple years and even like right at a, this like month period yeah. as well as a like a drop in quality. This is something that we've seen with a lot of stuff. This like quick rise in prices and it brings another kind of issue to light, at least in my opinion. I don't know what other people think about this, but I'm throwing sure. it out there into the universe. There are a lot of things that did do a quick jump in price at Walt Disney World. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, and we saw this, I think, my speculation is mm -hmm. that this has something to do with the supply chain situation that has happened not just most recently, but that has been happening kind of since the beginning of 2021. Um, now, I see this for two reasons. So when I first went in spring of 2021, there was a huge issue um, with like supply chain as far as Disney is concerned. Mm -hmm. I remember running into a bunch of different issues, trying to find merchandise at different places. You know, like I would go one day and see it a place and then it would be gone the next. 
And I, I inquired about it, but I also heard some people talking about it. And what they were basically saying at the time is that they were having so much trouble getting stuff that they were moving stuff from like one location or one um, like location within a store mm -hmm. to another location within that store or to another store altogether to keep merchandise, like to keep shelves filled. Now I know since then they've had like shut down some locations because they just didn't have enough merchandise to put on the shelves right. and they've changed the way that they've been doing some things, but that has kind of been an issue from the very beginning. And I would anticipate that between then and now, mm -hmm. um, and I say this with no like actual like knowledge of anything. Okay, I'm just throwing this out there. But between then and now, there seems to have been, um, there must have been a change in supplier in some ways. Oh, um, for sure. And we've seen this with a lot of stuff um, yep. over on facebook.com slash groups slash two foolish mortals, which is our like Facebook group. Mark posted a picture of a product that he got back in, I don't know if he said it, but he got it like 2019 or something like mm -hmm. that uh, when the Skyliner opened. And then he posted another picture of like the new version, the 50th anniversary version, and like the box is different and yeah. the quality. He was talking about the quality being different. And I think that this is true for a lot of things. There are a lot of things sure. where I think the quality yeah. has shifted, the quality Definitely. has changed, probably because of suppliers. Suppliers and I can to almost cut cost. guarantee oh that too. Let's be honest. Um or just wanting to cut cost. That's right. like a real thing too. Um but aside from just that, thank you. So September in twenty nineteen, um which, yeah, it was when the Skyliner opened. Mm -hmm. huh. yep. um, but, yeah, so I think that there are a lot of things like that where, like, mm -hmm. corners are being cut, things are being changed, and on top of that, the prices are going up for certain things. We saw that with new emos that took a huge jump in price. The Wishables yeah. took a huge, huge jump in price. price. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, those are just a board. few. But, like, as far as merchandise Sorry. is concerned, Sorry. those were yeah. things that took a huge jump in price. <laughs> Food did raise in price. And I think one thing that's important to keep in mind when it comes to that stuff, although quality is different, mm -hmm. when quality takes a hit, quality takes a hit, there's no way around it. Yeah. But... There has been a raise in prices or a rise in prices kind of across the board with a yeah. lot of different things yeah. as well. So um, Mark says the Skyliner gondola toy model, um, then $14.99, then it went to $17.99, and yes. now it's $19.99. And I if lost. I remember correctly, the... Um, the last jump was like within a couple months and yeah. that did happen with a lot of other things as well. It didn't happen with everything, but there were things that did raise and rise in price. Yeah. Um, lounge fly backpacks was a perfect example of them mm -hmm. when, um, when they first dropped the, I think it was the waffle backpack was $85. Then it was $95, like within a week, um, yeah. or $90 within whatever it mm -hmm. was within a week. So we did see some of this in my opinion, some of that is just terrible um, marketing management somewhere. Oh. Um, another example of that is the Dooney and Burke. Oh, yeah, the bag. That, like, oh, I forget his name. But Dooney and Burke came out with this really cute bag. I bought one. When we bought it, we bought the annual pass holder version. It was mm -hmm. $190 something dollars on Shop Disney. Like, the next day. It was 280 200. or whatever yeah, it was jumps, um, because yeah. they had made a mistake somewhere. So, yeah, like um, Mark's saying it's 11% increase in two months. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and there were a lot of things like that. I can't, I don't think that it's necessarily acceptable. I don't feel that way um, because, so, okay, so I don't feel good about the price increases that happen as quickly as they do. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll just say that. Sure. Um, the thing that specifically stands out to me is that Waffle Loungefly mm -hmm. backpack, yeah. only because the price changed within a week. Yeah. And, um, like, it was released at one price. A week later, the price went up. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not even, the way I see it, and I know not everyone agrees with me on this, and that's totally fine, but the way I see it is that, like, this isn't just, like, a minor mistake, this is a matter of, like, a they chose 
to print the price tags at one thing and then raise the price, mm -hmm. which I think is kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, I seem to, I'm, I'm a little bit more sympathetic to it when it's a price increase over a number of months or over a year or something like that. Yeah. It... Because maybe you've crunched the numbers by that point and you're like, okay. But when you start to raise prices in such short time periods of a couple months or of a week. Yeah. Then I'm like, well, I look it's at not like... a good look. No, it's not a good look because it, the first thing that comes to my mind is it's like you're almost using us as your test bed for to see what's popular, and the second you notice it being popular, you make the change. Yeah. Like we, your Disney's been we've been your audience since you opened. Like you know what we like. Yet you know, let's look at the Figment popcorn bucket for example. It's like you screwed up. Okay, but here's the problem with the Figment popcorn bucket situation. There's a couple issues, but okay. I don't know if you want to talk about that here or not. Okay, we're going to go into it briefly. Okay? Yep. Here's my problem with the Figment popcorn bucket, and I have a lot of them. Okay? So, buckle up. Pull that yellow safety tab, because we're going in. <laughs> so, the Figment popcorn bucket is the perfect example of Disney having an idea of something that will sell, yeah. but also executing it terribly. Okay? Yeah. So the big issue with the popcorn bucket is that they released it at a booth mm -hmm. rather than releasing it at a shop or at multiple different locations. Yeah. And the issue that I take with this is that, first of all, aesthetically, it was terrible. They were selling so many of them that they had boxes and boxes and boxes mm -hmm. of them just basically out in the open, which, come on, Disney, do better. You know better than that. Yep. Like, you can do better than that. It wouldn't have been such a big deal if it was spread out amongst a number of booths because then, at very least, they would have had, like, maybe a box yeah. at the booth as opposed to having, like, 12 boxes at yep. the booth. Just unacceptable. The execution... So I'm going to go back here for a second. The Minnie Mouse zipper that we talked about earlier mm -hmm. had such, um, had created such an issue that what they did is they decided to make it a mobile order only item mm -hmm. that you could get a cosmic raise at Magic Kingdom. Yeah. So what they did was they said, if you want to order it, you can mobile order it through the My Disney Experience app mm -hmm. and you can order no more than two of them. But that's a whole thing, different thing. And then you could arrange your time to go pick it up. This was a great way to disperse crowds. It was a great way to disperse these sippers. Mm -hmm. And this is something that they tried and they did when I was there in... When was I there last? When I was there in November. And... I don't remember. I don't even remember. Um, when I was there on the yeah. rainy day in November, I yeah. guess... Um, they could have absolutely done this. They mm -hmm. knew how the system worked. They could have done it with the Figment popcorn bucket. They chose not to. Yeah. That's unacceptable on their behalf. They have plenty of different locations that they could have made this popcorn bucket available where they could have hidden all the catastrophe that was the boxes. They could have made sure demand. that there was no seven-hour line or whatever it ended up being. Safe. Certainly not over the course of three days. Hold on. I'm going to continue to rant for a second. Okay. On top of that, the thing about the Vigman Popcorn Bucket is that it was at a price point that everyone could be happy with. It was $25. And mm -hmm. this is fantastic, especially for all of you who are always watching this and who are always having conversations about how expensive Walt Disney World is. Goodness knows, the whole reason that people tend to join conversations like this and we talk about these things is because Disney is expensive. We keep talking about how expensive the tickets are, how expensive the merch is, how expensive the food is. So Disney releases this popcorn bucket. They release it for $25, which is right in line with what it should have been. Mm -hmm. To assume that people weren't going to go crazy over this popcorn bucket and go get this piece of merchandise that they could afford is kind of nuts to me. Yeah. But that's the same point that I have about people who got grumpy about the popcorn bucket, meaning all the people who looked at those people in line and were like, why would you wait in a line to get a popcorn bucket? Because you're going to sit here and say that it's not ex like that everything's too expensive. And mm -hmm. then you're going to complain that people are waiting for the one piece of merchandise that maybe they want and or can afford. Right. So. That was executed very poorly. But the problem is, is that Disney continues to do nothing about scalpers, who we will never call resellers again, because let's call them what they are. 
scalpers. Doesn't sound nice. That's because it's not. Okay. <laughs> Disney knows they have a problem with scalpers and yet yeah. allowed this to happen like this. Mm -hmm. And while I understand that there's a conversation we could have about how you know, they sold out so quickly and how, you know, there was such a demand for them. If Disney would have made, had limited the number that you could get further, mm -hmm. if they would have introduced the ability to use your magic band or whatever it is, all the tech that's out there, yeah. if Disney would have done that, we wouldn't be talking about this today no. because they would have just done whatever it is that they know how to do mm -hmm. and they probably would have been able to spread the load yeah. so i think personally if they would have sold it at multiple different booths it would have solved a major problem of people being able to buy let's say there were a hundred available a hundred mm -hmm. figment popcorn boxes <clears throat> available sure. at four different booths sure that gives you four opportunities to go and stand in a line mm -hmm. so that means shorter lines and it means that the scalpers who would just take their entire family and put them in line yeah. and be like, well, now we bought 40 popcorn buckets. They would have to, like, you would be able to get in line ahead of them, essentially, because they can only stand at one line at a time. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like they're, they could have done better. Just where it's at. That's it. I'm sorry. I, I know I'm ranting a little bit, but I get, this is something I'm passionate about because I, I feel like well, this is a major pro this is a major problem with all the 50th anniversary merch and it's a problem with the things that people are talking about. What can you find right now at Walt Disney World? I guarantee you, if you go today, you go next week, you can buy that $1000 hat because the scalpers can't afford to buy a bunch of them. You can buy well, no, that $750. Yeah, because no one's going to spend 200 $2800 on it, which is what mm -hmm. they would price it based on mm -hmm what they're pricing everything else on. Yep. You know what I mean? Part of the reason you can't find some plus size stuff or annual pass holder stuff is because scalpers are going and they're grabbing. Because mm -hmm. the way that Disney does it is you can only buy two of each skew, which means yep. you can buy two extra small, two small, two extra large, two large, two medium, two... You know what I mean? Like, this is ridiculous. So... um but I just, I take issue with the discussion that, you know, it's stupid to want a popcorn bucket, which is a, something a lot of people are saying. And it's like, yeah, that's not right. it's not, it's not right of you to say that that's stupid. No. Um, but it's a hard situation too, because the only thing that I think when we're talking about scalpers, the only thing that I think is going to stop it is if people stop buying that stuff from them online. So as much as I might want that Figment popcorn bucket because I'm a huge Figment fan and I collect mm -hmm. popcorn buckets, I will not pay I'm anyone not beyond them. Disney no, I'm not anything them. more than $25 for that popcorn bucket. No. And I certainly won't do it just on principle alone. Yeah. So I feel very strongly about that. Let's see what Donna said. Um, <laughs> people are going crazy over everything. They even sold McDonald's toys and went to McDonald's and just bought the... Um, just bought it today, but, um, but not the Happy Meals. It's awful. So, hold on. Just so I understand, I think there's a little bit of, uh, issue there. So, recently we just saw that, uh, I think it's Stitch is the, the Happy Meal toy right now. Mm -hmm. So, I would assume you're saying that you wanted to get one and McDonald's didn't have any because they sold out already. Yes. And they are selling things on, they are selling things even like Happy Meal toys on eBay. Like the scalpers oh, have so gone awesome. so far as to do that. Yeah. Started in the 80s with the Cabbage Patch Kids. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, I yeah, think, I think she mentioned it yeah. just by the toy. Just yeah. by the toy. Yeah, it, it's 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 insane. You know what I mean? Um, and especially with supply chain issues, they only have so many. So well, and I think which makes it even worse. That's what I was trying to get. I know I went all ranty and like saw red there for a second, but like Okay, that wasn't me seeing red, but um, I think that's kind of the thing where, like, in defense of Disney, mm -hmm. although I have a lot of things anti-Disney when it comes to the to the figment popcorn bucket situation and all the merchandise, because I know that a lot of merchandise has been flying off shelves. Mm -hmm. I think the problem too is that there's only so much of it that you can get in yeah. so fast a time. Yep. So while I 
while I am like, yeah, they should have had more of them, how much are you going to order? Well, and that's the thing is, you know, Disney, and this is what I don't understand about the whole situation is like, you know, Disney's trying to make a profit because they don't want, you know, and they don't want to have a lot of overhead. So you're not wanting to order too many because then they're just sitting on a shelf in a warehouse and you're taking up real estate. But in the same breath, popcorn buckets, for example, is you have people, you have paying paying customers just standing in line for eight hours instead of going around your park buying food and buying this and buying that and experiencing things and see i think that's an execution yeah bad execution so you're not making money yeah they should have done it it in a different way but i will say that when it comes to getting all the stuff in this is a conversation that i had if you followed my vlogs about the epcot thing on that mug that i didn't get um Mm -hmm. my hands on when i talked to the cast members about that they were saying that right now what's been happening is that they're getting like a box at a time yeah so they're not getting getting like all like they're not getting like pallets and pallets and pallets or entire semis worth of stuff they're getting like a pallet worth of things and so they have just that to sell so do i think that maybe we'll see more of this stuff in the future Yes. It's going to fix part of the problem. I think that we're, there's going to be more of it that shows yeah. up. But the problem, again, that could be solved if Disney would execute properly is like, you know, if there's a supply chain issue, you can't get everything where you want it to be. Like, let's get some of this stuff up on Shop Disney, you know, and release only so much of it at a time on mm-hmm. Shop Disney or whatever it is. Look, I'm not going to try and go into solving these or problems. pre order. Pre order is another great option. It's so easy. Can you know do. how many to make? Yeah. You, you can understand how, you know, the popularity of an item. Mm-hmm. And then we get the item. We yeah. all win here. You get the money. We get the product. <laughs> and also, and no one has a be, black eye. Just to be clear, just to be clear. Um, I know that there are people out there who are like, you won't, under, you don't understand the concept. I have operated mm-hmm. with making merchandise before. And I have worked understanding that, like, yes, you can absolutely estimate costs. Prior to Don't doing do so this stuff, you can, there are things you can do ahead of time in order to make pre-ordering work. That's why Poor millions man. of companies do it. Right. Um, just had to say that because I know there's always someone who says something yeah. like that. Uh, and Donna said, yeah, she went after, there's actually a specific 50th one. Mm. And of course, uh, they were all out when she went to go get one. Yeah, so, I'm sure. Sorry to hear that. Um, yeah, it's tough right now. Yeah. But, it's, it's so yeah, it's a, it's a tough situation. I think it's a situation that like... You know, what are you It's a do? tough conversation to have. It is. It really is. I will say this, though, because we have to wrap this up. We have to round this out with something positive. My honest opinion is that there is absolutely stuff that you can get your hands on to celebrate the 50th anniversary at Walt Disney World when you get there. Totally. There's a lot of fun stuff, too. That people aren't thinking about because they're so fixated on the like pre-recorded here's the merchandise um you know like the pre-approved i should say list of merchandise that people talk about this is why chances are if you haven't been to walt disney world recently or maybe you're planning a trip and you just haven't gotten there yet Mm -hmm. you're hearing about the lux this that and the other you're hearing about these particular spirit jerseys that everyone can't get their hands on but you're not hearing about the back scratcher from 1971 or you're not hearing about you know the 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 really cute thermos you know Mm -hmm. or um the medallions, that's another great one. The medallions, the 50th anniversary medallions. People aren't talking about these things as much because they're not the affordable options and they are because they are the affordable options. And they're not popular. And sometimes. they're not catching attention because, mm. look, everyone wants to talk about the $1,000 Mickey ears. No one wants to talk about the fact that for 15 bucks you can get four medallions that are really fun to display, really fun to like have and say 50th anniversary. They're gold and you can't tell me otherwise. <laughs> you know, but it's it's much it gets more clicks, it gets more involvement, it gets more conversations going when you say things like can you believe that this Heat spirit jersey is $150, you know? Like that's the that's the thing and you know I mean, is that real? Yeah, it absolutely is real. It's mm-hmm. absolutely something that happens is happening right now. You can find those things. But it's also, you know, I would encourage people to to look at the other options, too. What are you laughing at? The fuzzy mortal. Oh, he's so cute over there. Propping his head up. Propping his head up. He's like, I've had enough of this. Um, 
I think someone calculated that Disney sold 500,000 of those figment buckets. And they sold 500,000. It disappears Sorry. before I can read it. Um, and they sold 500,000 in a weekend. Disney probably could have sold 5 million of them. Oh, exactly. yeah. Exactly. And at the same time, these people could have been walking around the parks right after that and actually buying other food and merch. And think about how much money they tr Disney truly lost in I the think, execution of I that I think item. it is definitely, with so much of this stuff, mm. I think it's, well, a, a perfect example of how much money I think Disney loses is like mobile checkout, right? How many <laughs> times have I been in a Disney store and decided to put items back because I was like, I'm not standing in that line. Then I heard that mm -hmm. mobile checkout was a thing and I was like, oh, I'm going to spend so much money because there are, like, I don't want to deal with... You're on vacation. I don't want to stand Standing in line. line but if I can do very... that via mobile checkout, oh my God, it's yeah. gone. And I think... It, you know? <laughs> well, and that's the thing, like, right, for example, the Figment Popcorn Bucket is actually a very good example of this when mm -hmm. it comes to standing in lines. I will sacrifice a day of my vacation for the Figment Popcorn Bucket purely based on the fact that it's a limited type of merch that we've never seen before. We're huge fans of it. Mm -hmm. Makes total sense. But for just regular stuff? No. You know, if I'm on my vacation, I just see some stuff that it's like, ooh, I'd like that. I'm not waiting in line for eight hours for that, for example. Well, and I think you another know? thing that we have to, you know, I mentioned this in a, in a past video well, a couple past videos, but I think another thing we also have to really talk about, we're going to get more into in a separate video altogether, is this rule of five that I continue to bring up. And it's like, I love this rule. Um, it's so, so in a nutshell, this rule of five is, is kind of my opinion. Um, I think there are like the average person can take five hits before they like approach having a meltdown, if not have a full on meltdown. Yeah. And so, you know, I think that, when you start to have all these things happen, um, you know, it's another hit. It's another hit you're taking. Oh, well, mm. dad st stood in the line to get the popcorn bucket, and now he's a little cranky. Okay, so that's another hit, you know. Um, and then there's like, you know, well, I didn't get to stay at the hotel I wanted to or whatever, and that's another hit. Oh, well, they were sold out of this, and that's another hit. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you have stuff like this happening, when you have these long lines, it may it puts a damper on your day before you even, like, get – I mean, even think about where this line was, okay? I'm not going to harp too much on the figment thing, but the line was right there mm -hmm. as you're, like, entering World Showcase. So imagine yeah, yeah. for a second you see that and you're like, oh, my God, it's going to be a terrible day. There's so many people here. Like, that yeah. already makes your day a little bit worse before it even started, and I think that's so disappointing. And I think, like, I've – could said continuously, like for a company that knows exactly what shade of blue to paint a building so that it doesn't catch your eye, they know what they're doing here. So they yeah. need to they need to fix that. Yeah. Wanna wanna read that? Yeah. So um Donna said, I love Figment. Uh I would sacrifice my son in law in line <laughs> to get me one. <laughs> yeah. Without a doubt. <laughs> for sure. Um and Mark said, I thought mobile checkout was good until we had to exit at only uh, one door and had to stand in line to show our receipt on our phones. And I think... So it depends on when, what time of day. And there where, are some right? And yeah. where. Sometimes, I will not lie, it is brutal. Yeah, it's almost worse, right? Um, yeah, but I think the, the thing is, is at that point... See, so here's from, like, the whole business mindset. Like, mm -hmm. at that point, you've already made the purchase. Yeah. So you don't have time to think about... True. I'm going to put this back. <laughs> Yeah. Um, oh, I think it was like a Costco line. And you got to wait if you get the. Yeah, which is essentially what it is. Um, it can't be that bad. I guess. But other times it's not bad at all. It really yeah. just depends on how busy it is. When I did mobile checkout and when I was like paying attention to mobile checkout, mm -hmm. I never saw too big a line. I think I saw like one or two big lines where I was like, wow. Um, but it still wasn't. I know I said too funny there. Yeah, you I was did. like one or two. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I can't speak today. It's, you're just the you're, winter is getting to me. You're passionate about the popcorn bucket. I get it. <laughs> the popcorn bucket about mobile checkout. Passionate about a lot of things. Um, but yeah, we've um, definitely seen those lines though, for sure. Yeah, we definitely. Concur. But I think it really just depends too depends on, on the people who are running yeah. the line. Like if if they're like new at it, they seem to be going a little bit slower. Sure. Other times, it's just like we're good to go. So, yeah, um, yeah I I believe. <laughs> To round to really round out the conversation, I truly believe that it's all in the eye of the beholder. 
but definitely do your research on what you're looking for to buy. You know, I mean, if well, you feel like it's too expensive, then maybe you shouldn't shouldn't buy it. You know. Well, I definitely agree, but I think the hard thing is when you say do your research, and this is where I'm kind of going to contradict know, you right? here for a second. I think the thing is, is you need to go to Disney with a budget. If mm -hmm. if you're going to Disney with a budget, I think you need to. You know, yeah, sure, do a little bit of research, but don't let that define your trip. In no. fact, I say don't do any research at all. Just go to the store, and if something catches your eye, then it catches your eye. Because there are a lot of things that are, yeah, I'm contradicting you 100%. No, 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 it's Smack totally fine, it because down. research was such because... a dumb word choice. I, I shouldn't have used research. Well, because, like, when we were talking... That's why we keep you around, Russ. I say two when you say research. And I say dumb um, things. Or... No, but I think that... um. I think that the thing is, is when you do too much research, you lose too much looking in, you're watching the videos, you're doing all that stuff, you are going to see a lot of stuff that is expensive because that's what people are going to talk about. Next time you're watching Disney vloggers, look, I watch them too, so I know. Next time you're watching them, pay attention to how many are going, wow, that's so expensive. It's almost everybody. It's almost everybody, and it doesn't matter what the price is. There are some times where the price is right in line with what you would pay if you store. were at a Target or a Walmart or somewhere else like that, mm -hmm. or you know what I mean, like at your local mall. Sometimes the pricing is right in line with that. A perfect example is hoodies. I know that you know you can sometimes get a hoodie, a generic hoodie, for fifteen dollars or whatever. But if you're looking at going to buy a hoodie, you're probably paying about fifty bucks. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what the prices are at Walt Disney World. Some of them are a little bit more, some of them are a little bit less. But I think that if you spend too much time focusing heavily on just what people are saying online, then Use your own judgment. it can be really hard to be like, yeah, but you know, using your own judgment is very important. Yeah. But when you hear people repeating, it's so expensive, it's so expensive, it's so expensive, oh, it, it's so it, expensive, it, it, it's in your brain it throws space. into your brain. Yes. And what you should be doing, instead of going into your, I would like to buy a piece of merchandise, yep. and I have X number of dollars thing, thinking, I have the money to do this, mm -hmm. or this is what my budget is. If you go into that going, everything's so expensive, everything's so yeah. expensive. You're, you know those five hits we were talking about? You're mm -hmm. going to be hitting yourself before you even get into the store. Yep. So... Just go look around. See if something appeals to you. If it does, great. Pick it up if it's within your budget. If it doesn't, don't pick it up. Yeah. I, th I think. But there are things out there yeah, that are I affordable. Th and I think a, per a real perfect example of this is food. Everyone talks about recently, I feel like recently food is expensive. Food, Food's pricey. Oh, this is. We're talking about merchandise. You're talking about food. I understand. Are that. you hungry? Well, I was just thinking about our Wendy's trip. Our trip to Wendy's, yeah, that's a that's actually a really good example. Sorry, yeah, it's just it was it was very expensive for fast food that was not good. It wasn't good, and it was very expensive. Yeah, comparatively to some of the prices we're hearing on, like you know, when you can grab your phone and look at mobile order real quick and mm -hmm. be like, how much is this actually at you know Tomorrowland Terrace? Wow, it's actually cheaper than what I just bought, and I know it's better because I just had it a little while ago, and I was in a theme park. <sighs> yeah. It's a problem. Let's see what's going on with this, though, real quick. Um, on our travel day, uh, we drive. Uh, we hit up the Character Warehouse and Violent Outlets. Sometimes you can find something cheap or something that can satisfy your desire to buy a souvenir. Mm -hmm. 100%. Just yes. like check and shop Disney before you go, for sure. Um, and then Donna said, that's right, Russ. Uh, if you would use your own judgment, you can see more and get what you really want. Uh, not to be influenced by others. Uh, yeah, I think Catherine hits the nail on the head, though. Where when you want to like get ready for your trip and get excited about your trip and that's all you're seeing is that's expensive, that's mm -hmm. expensive. There's an eight hour wait here and this is that and this is this. It does something to you. It's very, it, unfortunately, it clouds your, clouds your judgment and clouds your outlook to be very negative. Mm -hmm. Very easily when, you know, if you are someone who likes to do puzzles... Like, well, why would I even look? It's probably going to be too expensive. Yeah. You know, and it, it's, it's so tough, tough, too, because um, we're also we're also people who are very, like, part of our mission here is being open and honest. So if you watch our vlogs, you'll see yeah. that there are times where we say things that aren't positive. We say negative things or we'll, like, communicate our distaste for things. I do um, not care 
what anyone said about that chicken sandwich in Epcot during Food and Wine. <laughs> it was like the number one thing in the parks. And it was I will tell you the truth. That thing was horrible. Yeah. But horrible. my thing is, is like we we are honest about things. We want to be as open and honest as we can when we talk to you guys. Um, but one thing that we, we aim to do as well is give as well a rounded a statement as as possible and sometimes mm -hmm. that's like you know like i'm saying right now like the reality is is there are things that some of you are not going to be able to afford i know that because i can't afford everything i saw a really beautiful sixty five thousand dollar end table when i was at walt disney world i can't afford a sixty five thousand dollar end table but yeah. it's there and if you have the money for a sixty five thousand dollar end table then by all means it totally is worth every penny of that 65,000. But at the same time, I don't think it's fair to make a judgment based on all of that. I think it's fair to say, look, there's something for everyone. And I really do feel that way. And we've talked about that too yeah. with our number crunching. We just did a tax uh, post. If you can go to Disney based on your tax return. I mean, you know, I mean, everyone's tax return is different, but we, we were just kind of like exploring the topic. Mm -hmm. And I think that the reason that these types of things are important is because yes, there are plenty of people out there saying how expensive things are. Very true. Mm -hmm. But compared to what? Compared to what? Yeah. And I think when it comes to like our view on things and stuff like that, um, majority of the time we're in agreement because um, our view had a lot of back and forth prior to us co going live or making a mm -hmm. video. Like, we contradict each other a lot. Yeah, I mean, we do it here <laughs> live. Yeah, even when we're live. But, but like I'm saying, we it's spend, like, like the entire hours. week. Yeah, hours, hours talking about hours these going things. back and forth and bringing yeah. up different ideas and <laughs> like different Like laying down classes. in bed or like, yeah, I don't know how I feel about the popcorn situation. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. just, that's what we that's what we do. So I understand that it's you know it's a lot. And I also want to say too. Mm -hmm. um, I know I've gone to Disney a lot in the past year and we talk so much about Disney that there might be this opinion that some people have that I, that we um, are like rolling in the dough and have no idea what it's like to like really penny pinch and budget. That is not true. <laughs> um, although we're Please not currently, although it's currently not the situation for us, we have spent plenty of years of our lives like struggle busting <laughs> as well and so we've really had to penny pinch which is why we're so passionate about talking about trying to make every dollar stretch because we know what that's like and, and it's your money you should make it stretch yeah but I, I, it's not just a matter of like you should make it stretch if you yeah. can but like we have definitely been in a position where we're like we need to enjoy part of our lives like we need to do something fun mm -hmm. how can we make that happen on literally like two thousand dollars or whatever that we've scraped up over the past five years mm -hmm. this is something that we we get so yeah. it's not lost on us yeah. just keep that in mind and mark said uh, speaking of the sixty five thousand dollar end table i purchased a 35 dollar coffee table slash chest from a thrift shop uh on uh i, I can't read i that. can't read it um il 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 Roy, i i i put bronson uh that came from saratoga springs yeah, so, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, that's a cool way to, you know, get your Disney magic. Get that fun item. And that's my kind of coffee table. Be able to, you know, be able to have that fun with yeah. your budget. And let's be honest, though, having a piece of merch like that is really cool. Yeah. You know, so, you know, I think it's... Everyone's got their own thing. Yeah. So I think that's what, that's kind of what we're getting at here is like... Everyone's everyone has a different price point that seems expensive to them. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a different price point that seems affordable to them. I think what's really important if this is a conversation that you've been listening to is to just kind of go in it, go into this based on um, your own your own judgment and your own like your own experience. Get something that's fun and get something that you want because you want it and not something that you want because it's popular. I think, you know, I feel like that's, like, such a high school thing to say. But, like, it's it's mm -hmm. true. Like, I think that there, you know, there are a lot of fun things that would make really fun little souvenirs. And, and they're there and they're affordable. You just have to find what speaks to you and grab that. Don't be, be so worried about what other people are saying about how expensive something is or whatever. I'll hang on to a paper napkin that just happens to have the hotel stamps on it. We've talked thing. about, over the past, yeah. we've talked about a lot of really fun um, 
I pay ten dollars for beer, Hollywood Studios. <laughs> yeah, there's actually a couple here. Hold on, hold on a second though. So, um, I love to snorkel. Uh, so glad I found your channel. Welcome. We're glad you found us too. Yeah. Hi. Um, and then um, Scott said I paid ten dollars for a beer at Hollywood Studios. Here's the thing, right? That we we always talk about this recently, is the experience. You know, for you, like, if, like, you know, having a beer while you're watching, you know, the or walking around Hollywood Studios, is that if that's your thing, awesome. Mm -hmm. Do it. It's part of your, you know, budget. And who cares what other people think? It's what you want to do. If someone, you know, goes and buys a $65,000 table, good for Glories. them. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's some serious passion for Disney. I mean, let's be honest. See, worth it. Exactly. You know, I have to say, you know? um, we've talked a little bit about it in the past, and we're definitely going to go more into it probably sooner rather than later. I have a lot of, like, love for what I like to call, like, free souvenirs. Um, I'm huge on that. I love that there are – and Disney is filled with them. They're filled with so many great things that you mm -hmm. can get and take home that cost you absolutely nothing. And um, we just learned we just learned about one. Now we're not going to say it here. No, we're gonna not. Be a video on there's going to be a video, but oh, yeah. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of fun things, and and it's all about look. Disney is all about going and having a great time, whatever that looks like to you. Donna says free necklace at the jeweler. Yes, yep. that's one of them. And they're still doing it. They're still doing it. Um, I have mine packed away somewhere. I have to find <laughs> it. <laughs> Uh, I just recently got like this new thing where I'm putting all my jewelry in and I'm like, I'm like mm -hmm. discovering the jewel. I'm like, ah, that is jewelry. <laughs> Who knew? Um, so, you found some old Disney stuff too. I've got some really cute Disney yeah. stuff that's been like stuck away. Um, yeah. Speaking of free, I didn't know about buttons and my daughter went for the first time last summer. Buttons, you know what's funny about buttons? So I actually just got the past 12 months, I finally got my first buttons from disney even though i knew about yeah. them and everything i never got buttons from disney and they are one of my favorite new like yeah. disney souvenirs i don't I have love one. yeah you do you have, I have not gotten one you have an anniversary you, button you got one <laughs> i did not go and get one because i, I because i went to walt disney world and celebrated our anniversary technically by myself yeah <laughs> so and scott said the 50th keurig uh, coffee pod Exactly. 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 It's dead on. And then Mark's saying, uh, get a birthday button and rename your unbirthday and uh how see him street you. Yeah. Yeah. Um the love to recognize your unbirthday. That's great. They love to under That's recognize awesome. your unbirthday. You know, yes. an another cool free thing, now not tangible. I like tangible items, but one thing I can't wait to do and I've never done before, pixie dust. Pixie dusted, yeah, getting pixie dusted. I can't wait. I'm ready. She just turned three, so since we were pay, uh, paying for her, this, I'm getting her bun. Very nice. That's awesome. Happy birthday. Yeah. To the, sure. to the little one. Um, yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of free things. There's a, also a lot of things that I think people discard that are really really fun souvenirs. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about that in the future. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll save that for another day. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of great stuff out there. I really just think, you know, it depends. It all depends. Yep. But. Crazy, man. Th th this conversation can just keep going. I, I, know, I love it. I know. There's so uh, much we can so talk much. about. But, but yeah, I think in the end, the 50th merch, it's up to you. To so, yeah, it's up to you. But I want to know, before we go, oh. um, throw in the comments, is there any 50th anniversary merch that speaks to you is there any one thing that you are like yeah i would totally get that regardless of price regardless of how much it costs if you could pick you one, one piece, free ticket item kind one of piece of sure. 50th anniversary merch tell us what it is in the comments down below yeah. um for me i don't know what do you think your 50th merch would be i already got a popcorn bucket popcorn bucket oh, mickey in his suit that, that's it? He's killing okay, it. Okay, so you have that piece of merchandise. But like, if you could pick one other piece of 50th anniversary merch anniversary merchandise, what would it be? 
I like the retro stuff. I really would love that old school spirit jersey. I've got, I've been really into that. I think that one's really cool. Which one, the map one? The map one. Yeah, that one's like pretty the, cool. I like the map one. Would you one a go lot. all in and get the map, bucket cap, spirit jersey, and crotch? Yeah. Oh boy. How could you not? I would. I would even find like some sweet Disney socks to go with it. I'd be jamming. Oh, so you're saying like you would wear like the cargo shorts with yeah. like tall socks, tall socks, and crops. a fan, my fanny pack. We're oh rocking my it. Goodness. Yeah. Oh, no. um, I want the sparkling uh, new lounge fly bag. Um, mine would be the popcorn bucket or the sipper. Mark, if you make a dining reservation and check it on your phone, the app will ask if you're celebrating something. If you are, you might get a free dessert. There you That's go. That's a too. good one. Um, I'm not sure on the new lounge fly. Oh, the new sparkling lounge fly bag. Yes. Oh, that is just this the released. one, the iridescent one? Yeah, it's really cute. I did see that. I think yeah, I saw cute. that on Shop. Did, did I see that on Shop Disney? I don't think so. No, I think I saw it on Instagram. Yeah, I think you saw it on Instagram. That one's cute. Yep, very they cute. They have another one too that's like black iridescent. Have you seen that one? It's mm -hmm. like nighttime sky or oh, something yeah. like that. I like that one. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, I like that one. That's a good one. I love. Like, I'm not a huge lounge fly bag collector, but I love the lounge fly. No, I'm not. Okay. You got a lot of them. When I say They're I'm not awesome, a, though. When I say I'm not Specific a. Specific ones. When I say I'm not a huge collector, I mean, I'm not one of those people that has, like, a wall full. Like, you know how people, no. like, collect them. Yeah. I, um, I do have them, but I'm not, like, a collector like that. I feel like they're the perfect size. I don't know what you done. think, but um, yep. I think they're the perfect size. Um, and I did take. Uh, I did take the, um, what's it called? Lounge fly bag to Disney last time. That was, yeah. that was perfect, actually. Um, Another vlogger I follow had to get it from eBay. I'm not about paying more than the store price. Yeah, yeah and we did, we talked about that we earlier. Talked about that earlier. Not happening. Feel not supporting way. it. I will, we're going to have to give up on the merch because yeah. I refuse to support them. We kind of feel passionately about <laughs> about that because we really want stuff to be in the stores for people to get well, and that's the thing is you know if we would all just band together disney would do something more about it i feel like <laughs> hopefully. hopefully we'd all you know. just band together yeah. i feel like i like that yeah. le, le miserable kind of situation yeah you know that's uh, all anyway um <laughs> <laughs> rise um, up like you know the look on russ's face <laughs> a little intense you know? um it's too easy to fix okay so did you say what your piece was oh yeah that spirit jersey oh oh i want the whole thing crocs and all crocs and socks i don't know how i feel about let's being go. around you dressed in that whole I, okay i'm anti-bucket you would cap. be so proud of me <laughs> Be like he's got the guts to walk out here like that, and I'm, he deserves to I'm, be here. I am like strongly anti bucket cap. I don't. I I'm don't, not a fan of bucket caps either. I'm not anti you wearing a bucket cap. I'm just kind of anti the fact that they have come back. And it's funny because yeah. when I think about that, I think about my mom being like when when bell bottoms came back, croc <laughs> crocs baby. Yes. Um, I feel like I hear my mom when she, when bell bottoms came back and I wanted a pair, and she was like, no. Um, <laughs> do they have DVC 50th merch? I don't know. I don't think so. Specifically 50th? <laughs> Bucket <laughs> cap should be for toddlers and under only. Amen. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, I don't, let's, let's be honest, I, I am like, not team bucket cap. I feel uh, like the only strength. time that it's acceptable beyond that is like if you're gonna go in look look russ if you're going all in and you're like i'm gonna buy the bucket cap jersey i'm gonna wear the cargo shorts yeah and i'm gonna wear the um and i'm gonna wear the crocs i feel mm -hmm. like then and only then is the bucket cap acceptable yeah for sure sorry i'm just keeping alive on the feed we yeah, had a looks quick like there uh, was a little, little bit of a glitch there it's so it's fine uh, it shouldn't be too bad. I just want to see how yeah, it results it for the it viewers. Just so we have an idea. Yeah. Um, um, let's see. If it was me, if I could pick one yeah. piece of 50th anniversary merch, it's hard because, like I said, I'm not super passionate about any of it. Maybe I would just mm. get the – I think I would get the sunglasses. Okay, fine. Okay, so uh, something else. I would actually – the Citizen Watch. I'm definitely I getting really the, cool the ashtray trinket tray next time I go. Because, yeah. I, I, like I mentioned sure earlier, I was I, I collect ashtrays, and although this is not technically an ashtray because whatever, um, it's it's essentially remaking that. Let's <laughs> see. I have a bucket cap. Of course you do. Yeah, this is great. Um, um, 
I've only won it once. For about five minutes. For about five minutes. Well, <laughs> thank goodness for that. Um, it's <laughs> awesome. It's great. Uh, let's Down see. with bucket caps. Down with bucket caps. Shirt. <laughs> Jeez. No, please, no more bucket please caps. Please just wear a baseball cap. <laughs> You're I over just, the age of five. I just I want some more real estate on the, the, the shade. You know, let's go with the nice straw hats. You know, That's yeah. only so much better. <laughs> Hey, I think at least it's more function than fashion. I've got to go back down that road. Where's my Yeti cup, Disney? <laughs> oh, I want my, at least the last three days for my trip. Um, but yeah, I, I love that you guys commented. I love what you guys had to say. Um, I'm loving the chat. I'm so happy great. to see some uh, new faces. Thank you so much for joining. And of course, as always, the old faces jumping in. Absolutely the old faces. It. The old faces. I don't know. Just, the, returning the returning we faces. We don't call them old. What does Mark have to say? Because I can't. Uh, on my first trip to Walt Disney World in 85, I bought a pair of aviators um, that had Mickey on the lenses, has a watermark. I got the greatest looks. See, that's cool. That's what the that's what the new Ray-Bans have. The new Ray-Bans have? The oh. little Mickey on the thing. I will say this, though, and you guys, I, I don't know if we'll end up sticking around for all of it, but... I would love Disney if you're listening, Bobby. Bobby C. <laughs> Bobby C. Please. Um, if you came out with the watch that had Mickey and Minnie's face and talked the time, oh, all in. Man. I would buy one of those today if it came back out. I had one of those when I was a kid, and I want, I want one. Yeah. I want another one. That'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> that, and now what would be cool is they could even do it even better. We're gonna go even better. It could be a Magic Band. Oh my goodness! And it, oh it my god! Like, could you imagine if it talked to you like a my like, pal Mickey? <laughs> my pal Mickey wristwatch, like straight up like Disney's <laughs> Apple Watch, man. This is crazy. Like, first of all, it would be terrible because you wouldn't be able to boop it on anything because they stood like this tall. Secondly, doesn't matter. Secondly, goodness forbid you had to like put on a backpack or a long sleeve oh, yeah, shirt, you'd, you'd be caught. completely screwed. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, Donna's asking if he still had them, and then uh, mine's old. Scott says, quit hugging, quit hugging the spotlight, Mark. Those are some classic sunglasses. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, but no, Donna, I had no idea the old merchandise would ever be worth anything. But you know what, though? Like... You used it, and yeah. you know, unfortunately, it is what it is. And I think that's the scary part, too, though, is that now people buy merch and they don't touch it. They want to keep it and preserve it and everything. Yeah, but people also buy merch and sell it as though it's 80 years old and it was came out yesterday. It's still being sold. <laughs> it's yeah. Close, so, you know. I'm not saving stuff. I'm using it. You know, that's just well, that's just my prerogative. <laughs> you know, if you want to put it on a wall, that's fine yeah. too. But I like using. I like using. I like things. using it. You know, um, Jim and Scott, the water's fine. <laughs> Let's see you <right> again. <laughs> but um, I think that about does it for today's discussion. Yeah. We kind of covered all of it um, when it comes to 50th anniversary. Merch. Yeah, let us know. Let us know if you have any additional thoughts. If you're like us and you um, you sign off of this chat and then you think about a bunch of stuff, tell us about it in the comments. We would love to hear it because goodness knows we think about that stuff too. And we would be happy to continue the discussion in the comments. Yeah, we just, we'll, we'll keep talking about this probably for the next like also <laughs> till, till 50th merge ends probably. let's be honest it's gonna keep coming up we'll probably <laughs> another one of these like, no, no. um yeah. also if there's any topic that is in your noggin that you would love to hear us talk about we would love to know what it is we are always looking for fun and interesting topics to talk about on wednesdays with you guys and we love having you as part of the conversation whether it's in the comments or whether it's your conversation that you want us to have yeah so i should appreciate um, it for sure yeah so we'll be back here same day, same time, mm -hmm. next week. So we hope that you will consider joining us um, then. But until then, we've had so much time, so much fun talking to you guys. Yeah, it's such and a And we are so it's happy awesome. that some of you have found us. Thank you so much yeah, for dropping in. And um, we'll see you in the next one. Appreciate it, Scott. Thank you very much. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.